And joining me now to discuss the impact of the financial crisis on New York's economy is Nicole Gelinas, a fellow at the Manhattan Institute, and Carol O'Claricon, an economist with the Brookings Institution, who also served as budget director and finance commissioner in the Dinkins administration. Thank you both so much for joining us today. Thank you. Well, let me ask, let me start with you, uh, Carol, with the same question I asked Jim. You know, uh, Wall Street um, has a long history of boom and bust. Is it at all possible that when all this shakes out, that this will have turned out to be just another part of that cycle? Yeah, I think it's part of the cycle, but and part of that is um, cyclical, as you asked him, and part of that is structural changes. I think he was absolutely correct. I mean, Wall Street is undergoing something that's uh, quite structural. You went through it with him, mm -hmm. um, that uh, when you change investment banks to be deposit institutions, a mm -hmm. lot of this risk is going to go away. Thank goodness regulation is going to return, and there's a number of changes that's going to make. So in the longer run, there will be changes in New York City. Um, but from the immediate hit, um, we, we, we're going to have some problems. That's clear, and it's clear from what the mayor is doing that he anticipates that this is going to uh, have some impact on the New York City budget, though I do think it's a much bigger problem for the state of New York than it is for the city. The city has been doing a much better job at risk management, and this administration of the city has been doing a much better job at risk management than Wall Street has. Okay, well, Nicola, let me ask you, too. First of all, if you could answer what you think of this is cycle, cyclical or, or profoundly structural, which means a big, huge change. And secondly, the consensus opinion is that the city will, will cope with this much better than the state because in the last few years the mayor has used part of the surplus uh, to pay down debt. I wonder if you could... Answer me both of those questions. Sure. First, I think there's a grave risk that this is profoundly structural. Uh, if you look at the financial industry as a percentage of GDP, it doubled once in the 80s and then doubled once again going into 2006. So there's a very uh, clear risk that it grew too big as a percentage of the economy. Some of what we're seeing right now is the symptom of that, mm -hmm. and it's got to shrink as a share of the economy, and clearly that affects New York City much more than it affects the rest of the nation. As for whether the city is better equipped to deal with this downturn than the state, I think neither one of them, honestly, is uh, is very well off right now. Uh, since 2000, after inflation, tax revenues went up 40 one percent so because of the financial industry we cannot uh, support the level of spending we have if we don't continually see that level of growth so you're not as sanguine as others are about uh, how the, the city government has taken care of the problem and how we can cope no I think Bloomberg has set money aside for one bad year possibly two but when you look at how the city's debt burden has increased we're looking at debt costs for example going up 14 percent mm. annually uh, this this is something that is unsustainable in a structural downturn of our major uh, economic engine. Yeah. Well, um, Carol, if, if if that is so, or, or in any way so, um, and if in fact Wall Street shrinks, as it, all of you are saying, um, what's that going to mean for the local economy concretely? When, as we know, over 30 percent of the employment in New York City comes from the financial sector, 10 percent of the well, revenue. Well, it's not, but it's not in the financial sector, okay? And if it weren't in the financial sector, it will be other uh, places. Um, New York City has almost 4 million jobs, 3.8 million jobs, and less than 200,000 of them are on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. All right, yes, there's a lot of other industries right, related that react, industries. react to them, but they'd be reacting to mm -hmm. other things, too. And mm -hmm. Wall Street is not going to go away in that sense. And what you're going to see, I think, is a change in these institutions. I think there's going to be much more going on at smaller boutique institutions, which may be much more efficient, quite mm -hmm. frankly. And they will create their own spinoffs. I've had I have a lot of respect for the Wall Street mind and for the creative people in this town to come up with product uh, that meets the needs that are out there. And the need is for financial intermediation in, the, in not just the, uh, the national economy, but in the global economy. Okay? And so there's going to be some things going on there. It's just that the, our... Our uh, perception has always been, you know, we call Wall Street the hometown industry and we kind of focus on it, but it's actually small in that sense. It's mm -hmm. just, it's always, to use a kind of boxing phrase, it always sort of punched above its weight. Mm 
<laughs> all right? And it does that because these yeah. people are very well paid. And some of that's going to change. And you know what? Some of that's not so bad, mm -hmm. uh, Raphael, because people have been complaining for a long time about the disparity between the very rich and everybody else in this town. And if some of that changes it, we might end up with a much fairer situation. Mm -hmm. And it, some of that was in, in, in what we saw. Yeah, Somebody yeah. is saying, you know, this may become, part of this town may become more affordable Yeah, to I people. want to talk about that in a second, especially uh, as it relates to real estate. But, uh, Nicole, I want to uh, talk to you about the state, which Carol mentioned earlier. As I said to Jim, you know, six weeks ago, the, the governor was saying that we were in a crisis. Mm -hmm. uh, now we're in a real crisis because of the dependence of the state on the revenues from Wall Street. Um, is this the moment when Albany is actually going to take on and make some cuts in the two big and very protective items of, of Medicare and education? Do you, are you optimistic that that is going to happen now? I'm optimistic because if there's ever a time to do it, it has to be now. They really have uh, no choice. The city is actually... It will see a delayed reaction to this crisis because the city has property tax revenues, which if they do go down as property values decline, they'll go down more gradually than the income, uh, income tax that the state relies on will. So the state is looking at this crisis, the acute phase of this crisis, perhaps a year before the city is. And when we look, you know, the, the good news in some ways is that there's so much money to, to cut. We've got a nearly $50 billion Medicaid program and we need to kind of go back to the basics, figure out who this program is for. Is it for uh, giving a necessary health care to the poor, working class, uh, elderly? Or is it for these special interests that uh, famously lobby Albany with millions of dollars uh, a year to get exactly what they want in, in much fraud? Uh, we've seen perhaps up to 10 percent of that is, is fraud. So there's room the, for, for oh, cutting sure, without absolutely. hurting people. Do you agree? Well, yeah. Yeah, I, I do, but I'd like to add something to what Nicole said. Part of the reason that it's going to be easier and better uh, and calmer, frankly, for the city, even though we're going into an election year, um, is that the city has to operate under very strict rules. And they were rules put out by the state and put on them by the state. The state isn't operating on those kinds of rules. So you have to, uh, in, in a rational sense, everything you said, Nicole, was right. But in a political sense, um, the state has a way of kind of defining its way out of a problem, mm -hmm. declaring that it's balanced when it really isn't balanced or jiggering around its finances or selling, loaning assets to itself or reselling mm -hmm. assets to itself, the things that they have done in the past, things New Jersey did for itself in the past, to kind of get around the hard yeah. part. You can't do that okay, in New York are, City. Are, are tax cuts, I mean, are tax increases inevitable as are uh, cuts in services? I think you're going to look at both sides of the ledger street. You and have to look happen? at expenditures and In an economic and downturn, and raising taxes. taxes, what is that going to mean for, for the rebounds of the economy? I think for the city, uh, I agree that this downturn does not have to be terrible for New York City's long-term prospects. Many people from all kinds yeah. of industries would love to come here, take advantage of likely cheaper real estate prices, both on the yeah. residential and commercial and side. So but if we do raise taxes, we will prevent right. that from happening. That will be a block. Right. You both agree that there's a potential of good news in this, as the gentleman said in the piece, that the lowering of real estate prices, although it will lower the revenues that the, that the city collects, will bring people in who can now afford to live here. You know, but let's face it. This city has made a deal. It has sort of said, we're going to levy the taxes we need to provide you with the services you expect. And people have appreciated that in New York City. We, changed, we pulled policing around, right? We had dedicated revenue to put more cops on the street. We got more cops on the street. It brought down the crime rate. It's brought in population. It's brought in tourists. Mm -hmm. So that's, I think, the bargain mm -hmm. that you get in New York City. The question is, are you getting it in New York State? And do people think that they're getting it in New York State? And is to different is it the same? Situation. Right. Is yeah. it the same? It's much easier to tell in a city when, where you're in a confined geography, you know things are working. And I think some of the issues now that are going to face us are going to be some of our infrastructure, what's happening with our bridges and our tunnels, and what's going to happen with the transit system. What's going to happen? That's my question to you. What's going to happen? Well, I it's a difficult one. It's okay. a difficult one because when things have gotten tough for New York City, New York City's pulled money away, and New York State, they've both 
both okay. pulled money away, pulled okay. subsidies away from the transit system. And that's not what this town needs. We only have about a minute left, and I have two questions. Quickly, the $700 billion bailout is stuck in Congress as we speak. Is it a good thing that they're, that they're delaying, that it's not happening quickly, or should it happen quickly to avert a disaster? Carol? I think that... Uh, there's a role for the Congress in this, and I think that they are bringing up all the right okay. kinds of issues. Nicole? I think if it does avert a, a disaster, which we all hope that it will, we're still stuck with the fact that we have a financial industry whose model is clearly broken, and where do we go from okay. there? Okay, and in 15 seconds, are we going to see uh, light at the end of the tunnel? Same question I asked Jim. Anytime soon? Not in the financial industry. Not Carol? I, I, I think so. I've seen too many of these come and go. That's, that's right. I, I, I know. You've, so. seen, you've seen I bad times. So. When? Uh, probably by 2010. 2010. Okay. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to talk to both of you. Thank you. And that's it for this special edition of New York Voices. I'm Rafael Pierramont. Thanks so much for joining us. Good night.